Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith with the Inspiration Conspiracy Video Hop. One of my very favorite art mediums comes from the hardware store. It's Joint Compound. I'm working today on a 12 inch by 24 inch canvas. I'll begin by putting big dollops of this Joint Compound onto the center of the canvas. And then I'll spread it out. Last time I used this tool, I should have done a better job of cleaning it when I finished. It still has dried joint compound on the tool and it's dragging the wet joint compound away from the canvas. I'm going to change tools while I soak this one in some water to clean it up later. This plastic knife from my kitchen is working a whole lot better and it has a serrated edge and a flat edge on it both. So I can play with both of those. I'm learning that I need to keep a tub of water near me for immersing any of these tools that I use in the joint compound. If you put them into the water immediately, it keeps the joint compound soft and it's easier to clean up. I found this piece of uh, old lace curtain at a thrift store and I'm going to spread this out across the canvas and I'm going to show you uh, how I do this. I've seen people just depress it into the canvas like this and lift it up. That really doesn't work well for me. When I pull the lace back, I find it's not as textured as I want. I'm wanting more depth and a richer texture, so I'm going to add a layer of the joint compound on top of the lace and spread it out, and I then I scrape it down with my knife. And when I lift that uh, piece of lace off, my texture is much has much more depth to it. I can always get rid of the texture if I want to by just sliding a knife over it or sanding it down when it's dry. Now let's play with some rubber stamps. I got these, I think they were a dollar a piece at Michael's, and uh, I just press them into the area that I kind of smoothed out with that knife. This type of stamping seems to work better for me if I wait, oh, about five or ten minutes before I start stamping and let the surface of the joint compound dry just a little bit. Remember to dip these into water as soon as you finish using them because they're going to get joint compound all up into the smallest areas. So keeping it wet will make it easier to wash later. Here's my strawberry yogurt tool. I don't think I even bothered to wash it out, but uh, the edges are clean. And I just used it to make little bubbles all around the surface and here's a cork that I also indented some uh, circular areas with. I kind of had to twist that and run it around to make it work on this. But the yogurt tool has two different ends on it, two different sizes. You can get two tools in one. You'll see me reach up under the canvas here with my other hand because I needed some pressure coming from behind. I'm not sure what kind of uh, print I'll get from this little seahorse but I'm going to try it and see. I smoothed out a little area and pressed him right in and actually the outline worked pretty good. When I tried it in another area on the canvas it didn't work so well so the nice thing is I can just rub it out and do something else or try it again. Later I brought in a sharpie marker and used just the tip of that sharpie to make some little teeny tiny dots. It's actually a lot of fun to look around the house and see what you can find to make textures on your canvas. I really like this serrated knife, the way it leaves little waves and swirls and things. I think I'm about finished with the first layer of textures, so I'm going to let this dry overnight. This is not one of those 30 minute projects, but the end result is well worth your time. Okay, all the gray has disappeared and it's dried to a chalky white, and my next favorite hardware art medium is all-purpose adhesive caulk. This particular tube of caulk was left over from a remodeling project I did about two years ago, so I'm hoping it's still damp enough to use. Now you load it into a caulking gun that looks like this, and then you snip a very small amount off the end because my first application I want it to be very tiny little line. And here we go. I guide this as I push it along the canvas, but I don't try to control it. Let it uh, flow freely. Sometimes I push it down with my fingernail a little bit to be sure that it adheres to the canvas, but that free flowing motion gives those lines an organic quality. I probably should have done this earlier, but it's not too late. Uh, I'm pulling a damp terry cloth, cloth across the uh, little sharp edges 
that the joint compound left, and that will ensure that they won't break off later. There's always more than one way to approach almost anything thing we do, and you could use sandpaper to do this, but this damp cloth is taking really good care of it. I'm going to add some glass pebbles, and by the way, the bag they come in makes really good texture for the canvas sometimes. You just push the pebbles into the caulk that you have on your canvas and then make sure that there's enough of the caulk surrounding it uh, to hold it on. You don't want it falling off later. I've been known to glue it on, but really this is going to work fine if you do it properly. If you get too much of the caulk on top of the pebble, you can take a wet paintbrush and just use it like an eraser. Just swipe it right off. Okay, the caulk's all dry and I'm ready to add some primary elements from Color Art in the color Solar Gold. This is an artist pigment and I wet the canvas a little bit with some uh, fixative thing. This will keep some of this dry pigment powder in place. Filling in the areas of the seahorse and the stamps of seashells that I previously stamped it into the joint compound. But if those later become just uh, abstract elements in the painting, that's not a problem for me. I always start with an idea in my head, but hardly ever end up the same place, and I find that my paintings are more successful when I cooperate with what's happening on the canvas rather than trying to force it to do what's inside my head. Unfortunately, I noticed while I was painting that some of the caulk had not adhered to the canvas at all, and it was loose. So. Here's an area that's loose, and as I investigated, an awful lot of it was loose. I've had some of this caulk around for a while, so I think that it's just getting too old. I'll flood this area of caulk with Winsor & Newton matte medium, and that will cause it to adhere. I don't want to lose that caulk texture. I'm going to add paint right into the wet areas. In fact, I'm going to flood the whole canvas with the matte medium, and I'll paint directly into that with some of my paints. That will give it two different kinds of adhesives to make sure that this caulk uh, remains in place. And I'm brushing away from the caulk first. I flooded the canvas with matte medium, even on top of the primary elements, solar gold. The first color I'll add into that wet medium is Radiant Gels Dimensional Paint from Color Art in the color Stargazer. I'm randomly balancing color all over the page to create a composition. And I want to warn you, if you uh, are going to put several layers on your composition. Do not fall in love with your first one. My next Radiant Gel color is Key Lime. This layer will be Radiant Gel's African Jade. Radiant Gel's dry really fast and I'll continue to add layer and layer over these layers as it dries of the same colors that I've already used. And then I'll add some new colors like this Guatemalan Green. By this time I've just about lost all my solar gold but I wasn't uh, particularly happy with the way the colors look together at that time. So now I'm using Mystique. It's a primary element artist pigment and I will mix it with primary elements uh, clear glaze medium. Mixing these two products together uh, gives you the same thing as the silk acrylic glazes from Color Art, except I can put more powder into the glaze if I want to, and uh, it gives it a more intensified color. And while that's still wet on the canvas, I'm going to put some of this evening rose just in powder form on my brush and brush it into the wet paint. In the pursuit of balance and good composition, I gave up my seahorse and almost lost my seashells, but that's okay. I also feel like this is getting a little too monochromatic. So I'm going to go to the other side of the color wheel and choose a warm color to create a center of interest and balance out the composition. I chose this warm color called Indian Copper to help solve that monochromatic problem. Everything seemed to keep trying to converge in this area. It kept coming towards this area. I'm playing with some more of these glass pebbles to bring the center of interest even more into focus. I'll add those with P6000 glue. A general rule is that the center of interest shouldn't be smack dab in the center. Consider putting it off center. I'll show you the entire final composition in just a moment, but please remember this is a video hop. So click on show more in the video description box below to see how to get to the next video. If you enjoyed watching, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Comments and shares are always appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.